Hi, my name is Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around our Range Rover Velar. It's the first one we've ever had. Uh, then I'll take you for a ride in it, but first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a 3 litre SD V6 R Dynamic S. It's automatic, four wheel drive, Euro 6, 2017 on a 67 plate, has done 45,622 miles. Fuel economy, urban is 38.2 miles per gallon. Extra urban, 48.7 miles per gallon, which is absolutely fantastic, if you can get it, of course. And combined is 44.1 miles per gallon. Has a 0 to 60 time of 6.1 seconds, a top speed of 150 miles per hour, out of a six cylinder, 296 brake horsepower, 24 valve engine. It has keyless entry, power folding door mirrors, which automatically close when you shut the doors, black side vents, and download bonnet, piano black 21 inch wheels, rear privacy glass, black roof, reversing camera, front and rear parking sensors, this rear splitter, black Range Rover badges, integrated rear spoiler, shark fin aerial, high pressure headlamp wash, Isofix rear child seat fasteners, Meridian speakers, power folding tailgate. So the service history. 13th of the 9th, 2018, at 14,796 miles, Peter Vardy, London. 11th of the 9th, 2019, at 27,951 miles, Stratstone Land Rover. 6th of the 11th, 2020, at 34,589 miles, Stratstone Land Rover. 23rd of the 7th, 2021, 37,450 miles, Stratstone Land Rover. 2nd of the 11th, 2022, at 41,568 miles, Stratstone Land Rover. So only done 45,622 miles now. Um, the car, the car is beautiful. Um, it really surprised me. We, we've never, we never had a Velar before, and well, let, let's get going. That's the key. So as long as you've got the key on your person, foot on the brake, click the start button. You'll see this centre bit, which uh, will come out in a second. There you go. You can actually adjust that as well. You can adjust the angle. Um, I, I much prefer the ones that are just stuck there and, and there's nothing to go wrong. Then you've got, <clears throat> now, <laughs> if I switch this on, I'll turn it down. But this black bit in the middle, that it appears to be all black when the car's switched off. As soon as you switch it on, this screen tilts forward and you've got your home display there. And then this is actually all part of a, a touch screen. Um, if I'm honest, I prefer the old system. I really do. Switches and buttons. But here we go. So it's the first Velar we've had. I'm going to turn the aircon down here, turn the fan up a little bit. Try and cool it down in here. You've got your heated front windscreen there. This has got a height and reach adjustable steering wheel, but it's not electric. There's a switch there, so just knock that switch on. And then we'll get around this corner, hopefully without running into each other. I'm not up at Wiresdale Tower today. The weather's been, since I got back off holiday, I got, got back uh, this time last week, I've only managed to be able to video one vehicle. We sold a lot of cars um, and it looks rains forecast for the foreseeable future, except for today. But uh, I'm gonna have to do my best to video them in the rain. I have to bring the umbrella. Anyway, so last week, um, don't ask me how, but uh, my girlfriend was leaving two days before me, Sorrento. Her uh, flight was cancelled, which was going from Naples Airport to Manchester. Instead, EasyJet flew her to uh, Luton, and then a coach from Luton to Manchester. I, my taxi, my uh, transport was laid on 
I ended up getting a taxi back from Manchester Airport, coming back to the garage and, and picking a car up to go back and pick my girlfriend up. And now, this is the car that John very kindly left out for me. And uh, I drove it back to Manchester Airport. I, I have driven one once before at an SMMT driving day. And I thought it was lovely, I, I really did, I thought it was lovely, but I just thought all this was, was too much. Now obviously, this setup appeals to a lot of people these days who, who, who aren't kind of dinosaurs like myself. And it, once you've got used to using it, it's easy enough to do. But as I say, all, all this display, startup screen, phone, climate control and you know you, you click the climate there so I, I'm, I'm looking away from the road to click the climate control whereas normally you, you just you know you just know where it is after a while in your car so there you can you can set the uh, screens to the heated screens to automatic uh, on and off it, it just seems to be hugely complicated for, for something that doesn't need to be. Uh, it's got the, the sat nav, the sat nav screen, nice wide, wide sat nav screen. There you go. Um, easy enough to use. The best thing about this system, it's got Bluetooth hands free, Bluetooth audio streaming. What I should have done before we set off is I'm just going to pull up here. And because I'm going to touch my phone, I'm going to knock the car off, put it in park. There you go, it's all off. Take my phone out and then plug it in. There we go. So if I plug that in, just watch the screen here. There you go, CarPlay's come up. CarPlay, and, and that's it. So now I'm not going to touch my phone again. I'll start up and into drive, you'll see the gear selector comes out of the gear tunnel. You've got your Apple CarPlay screen there. I'll just play that quickly. I'm going on during this time, I feel there's no one. Brilliant sound system in this um, Velar. You see there, that's the Apple CarPlay system. I'll show you how to pay your mobile and uh, Delete to mobile, set the sat nav, play audio, and use your Apple CarPlay uh, when I've been for the test drive. But, but that's it. it, it's a brilliant system. You can send text from it, you don't need to touch the, you don't need to touch your phone at all. So you can, you can send a text, you've got voice control here. So, hey Siri, send a text to Barry. I bet you wish you were still in Sorrento, don't you? It says, I bet you wish you were still in Sorrento, don't you? Send it. Yes, please. Done. Now, I couldn't, oh, there you go, it's beeped. So I've got a text. The text comes up on here. I've got a text. Barry I can click on I it. I bet you wish you were still in Sorrento, don't you? Would you like to reply? Yes, please. What do you want to say to Barry? Boy, do I wish I was still in Sorrento. It says, boy, do I wish I was still in Sorrento. Send it. Yes, please. Done. So, so that's it. Uh, I mean, if I just go back there, if I just go back there, you'll see there, that's the messages. There's a one there, so it's showing that. And, and, it, and it's, it's just so easy to do. Barry said, boy, do I wish I was still in Sorrento. Would you like to reply? No, thank you. Okay. So, you can do exactly the same making a phone call. If you want to, if you want a direction somewhere, you just touch this, keep your finger on this. For a couple of seconds, the Siri baseball, multicolored baseball, whatever you want to call it, comes up. And then you just tell it what you want to do. It's so simple. You don't need to touch your phone. This car drives absolutely fabulously. I think it's 
a little bumpier than a Range Rover Sport, believe it or not. I could be wrong, I've not driven it for a, a great length and to be fair, I haven't driven my Range Rover Sport for a while because I've been driving my Citroen Ami. So perhaps I'm out of touch, who, who knows, but that was my first impression. It just feels to be a little bit bumpier, whether it's suspension or not, I, I don't know. Um, perhaps you can uh, see dynamic, I've, it's in dynamic. So if I click that, let's see, the, the dash goes red, that may make a difference. So if I just click it onto Eco, I can't remember where this has got air suspension. I'm sure it has. But now we're, we're in Eco. It's just a, it's a lovely car to drive. The seats are very comfortable. It's probably a bit more, it's like a Range Rover Evoque Sport Hybrid. So it's a little bit bigger than the Evoque, but the same sort of lovely styling as an Evoque. And this, the size of a, a Range Rover Sport. Here we've got these little kind of, you've got menu there. If I click on menu, You've now got, I can flick through it. On the right hand side there. I need to take my polarized sunglasses off because it's difficult for me to see. What have we got there? Oh, so we've got, got lane departure warning there, no doubt. We've got speed limiter, cruise control, cruise control, what should we be doing up here? So that that's it back on the actual car's navigation system. It's 40 miles an hour along here at the moment, but going into a 30 limit. So I'm going to set the cruise. You can see they're very hot around here on average speed cameras. So we're at 29, I'm going to click set. That's the cruise on. I'm going to, it's set at 29, I'm just going to click it once more and that's taking it up to 30 miles an hour. So, feels like you're walking, <laughs> it really does, but uh, obviously you're not. You're being, uh, you're floating along on a magic Range Rover Velar carpet. Honestly, it does. 30 miles an hour, it, it just, to me now, I've been driving my uh, Ami, this feels like you, you just stopped. We've got electric memory seats. Electric memory seats are over here, three position. You adjust your mirrors, your seat, and then click M and one or two or three, whichever you want, and it, and it sets it. You get back in the car. Um, Press one and that's it, you're back to where you would be. Here we've got power folding door mirrors. Now we have to be careful to give this chap at least a yard. There you go. And uh, I'll go back to resume. I think we're still 30 here. Oh no, we're 50. I don't come up this way very, very much so. We'll get up to 50. Forty-seven. Going uphill now. That's close enough. So I'll just get it close enough, and then I can adjust it with here. I can either minus here or plus. We want lane departure warning off because that's a silly idea. So, beautiful to drive. 
Um, your seat, got heated seat. I'll click that, that's switch that on. Now, if I click that, you've got there plus three. So I can turn that down from here to plus one or off completely. So there's that, you've got climate. My, my fingers don't really work on touch screens. Don't ask me why not. I think, I think my fingers are too rough. Um, obviously, you know, not, well, whatever. So that's the climate, you set it on automatic. Sync means both sides uh, are the same, so you can control it from the driver's side. If it's not on sync, you can have a separate climate for the passenger. Um, vehicle, click on vehicle. All that, is, that was dynamic. So we're in eco at the moment, click there. Dash goes red, throttle's more responsive, everything tightens up or seemingly tightens up. It's not a it's not a good it's not as good a ride as an eco, in my opinion. Um, you know, if you want to get somewhere in a hurry, get one of those cars that sounds like an angry wasp. Not a Range Rover. Range Rovers are for enjoying the scenery, feeling safe, being chauffeured, wafting along, feeling like the king of the road. And uh, I can thoroughly recommend them. Beautiful cars. So I'm not just sure where to go. Should I go up here or carry on? I'm going to carry on. I love it. I'm um, right. So we've got another cup holder there. We've got two cup holders here. Armrest there with HDMI socket in, USB. I think there's a power socket in. Nice old quacker there, Kawasaki. Guy's gesticulating, hopefully he's not broke down there. No doubt we'll see him when he, we're coming back. I'm going to take you up to Rivington um, or Belmont. Lovely road. Let's see what we've got. We, uh, it's got keyless entry, keyless locking. You've got keyless start. Power closing uh, tailgate. The big 21 inch alloy wheels. Just trying to see here. So at the moment it says OK in this little kind of, well, it's kind of like a mini touch screen. You've got a diamond here. Click the diamond. Click OK. So you get back to the information display in the center. Click on the menu. Now you've got four arrows. We're gonna have to do that again because it's timed out. So click OK, there's menu, click on the menu. It changes to the four pointers and then I can scroll through. A trip. I'm going to slow down here because I don't want to crash either. So you just Cars are way too complicated these days. The good thing about going up 
to Wiresdale Tower is there's very little traffic, but on roads like this, then uh, it's probably more advisable to stop and sort your stuff out. So Rivington's there, Bolton there. I'm going to turn up here. black dog in there that used to be on my courting run a long time ago well, I haven't been there for a long time make of that what you will The suspension is tremendous, actually, I've got to say. Do I like it more than the Sport or a Discovery? Well, that's a difficult call. Now, I was going to come here to take photographs. But I don't know whether I will do or not. No, I'm going to I'm going to carry on. But you see the car park here. There's just there. I, I'm going to take a photograph of that because you just won't believe it. If you went over that in anything else but a Range Rover or something, then uh, I don't think you'd be having your suspension for very long. You have to be very careful with motorbikes around here because they do get carried away. And I know because I'm one of the ones who used to get carried away on a motorbike. dash there on the left hand side you've got your speedo in the center your information display on the right your red counter indicators on the left wipers on the right we have paddle shift here which you can change down like so listen now uh, it's all good I'm also scoping out somewhere else to take photographs rather than go all the way up to Wiresdale Tower. That was one of the places I was hoping for. Unfortunately, like anywhere else, well, oh gosh, look at this. I don't look like it's a very safe place to take photographs there, judging by all the skid marks. So there's a, there's a walk back there, a nice walk, and obviously those people are out there making the most of it today. That might be a good place to take photographs, I've got to say. I think I might uh, try that, but I, I don't know where that leads. If I get there early enough, I, I shouldn't interrupt people or get in the way. So, I, I already knew, as I say, I went to Manchester Airport the other night in it, last week drives fantastic it's got carpet mats and in the boot there's a full set of heavy duty rubber mats too always says a great deal about the owner the car's lovely um, 
beautiful inside nice finish it's got all the latest mod cons if that's what you you like your screen and so on I never actually noticed I, I don't think it will but I was just wondering whether if you were to change the set at the, the angle of the screen would it memorize it with a seat I, I don't know I doubt it but uh, it's something to uh, think of see this and hopefully you'll be able to see it from that camera but it really does leave me cold don't want to be looking down there and touching stuff my fingers don't work Range Rover buttons clicks switches rotary controls with like a safe tumbler where you can feel it moving on to the next one you don't have to look well wow. <laughs> that was obviously the cyclist's fault <laughs> minding his own business and having that car overtake him like that on a blind bend <laughs> blooming cyclist Let's just go towards the pike and I'll turn around here. So this is the walk to Rivington Pike, you can see it up there. I've done that many a time as well. Very pleasant. There's a car park at the end here where people come and uh, hike up there to the well, it looks like uh, looks like there's a lot of water coming off the the hills there this this was another of my brain waves where to come and park and uh, I might try it. The only trouble is I like everything to look the same. I like all the videos to look the same and uh, it just doesn't. Let's just see up there. I think there is a, a spill off car park there. Here we go. We've got piano black as well up here and uh, around all the switches. Wow, another another massive pothole that must be seven or eight inches deep at least now I wonder if I got up here early enough still not brilliant but Looks like a great place to get mugged. <laughs> and all your camera equipment stolen. That's definitely an alloy wheel and tyre killer, that pothole. Nice to see people uh, actually taking the kids out from fresh air for some fresh air instead of sticking them in front of a TV with a Game Boy or something. Um, I've probably uh, spoiled my chances of taking some decent photographs now by coming up here as well. That's one of the things that's uh, not going to help, is it? If the if the roads like that all the time, we've had lots and lots of rain recently. So you know that's uh, that's something to bear in mind.
road closed here for all vehicle and cycle traffic. go into the display vehicle settings vehicle info Just, it's a, it's a lovely car, ideal for roads like this, and uh, another great car that John acquired while I was sunning myself on holiday. I must say we've been fancying one of these for a bit, but the, the miles per gallon is it's just, uh, I just don't see how it's done and, and how it seems to be so much better than a Range Rover or a Discovery. So I'll finish the video there. I'm not sure whether I'm going to be happy with this sort of format. I'm sure that anybody who's watching me will leave their opinion. They usually do. I'm always willing to learn, especially whatever customers thinks best or would prefer so. Leave your comments in the uh, below, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.